we're talking cadence. Okay, what is it? Why it matters? How does it affect other running stats? And how do we manipulate it to run better, faster, stronger at the track, trail, and road? That's right, we have all the answers. We're interested in how cadence affects the other running data, the power output, uh, ground contact time, vertical oscillation, heart rate, and pace. What that actually means for runners devoted to track, trail, and road. But first, a little run through about what cadence is, and I'll be quick with it. What is cadence? It's the amount of steps you take per minute as a runner. Simple, right? Why does cadence matter? Well, cadence has been identified as a factor that's strongly associated with running related injuries or avoiding them, to be honest. Increasing your cadence reduces the energy absorption needed at the hip and knee joints, thus reducing the risk of some common running injuries. It also helps with increasing your pace with seemingly less effort. I know, absolute magic. The one went to Hogwarts. I know what you're gonna ask next. What's the average running cadence? Well, there's varying suggestions out there. 160, 170 steps per minute is a good guy to start with. But bear in mind, beginners would often be slower and the elites hit about 190 to 200 plus. It's worth a note, anything below 150 is generally believed to be overstriding and will likely put you on the waiting list for an injury sometime very soon. <laughs> if you're not sure what yours is or where to start, either count each step for a minute of running or most running watches out there will tell you now anyway, so just rely on your trusty watch. Told you I'd be quick with it. Now, onto the data bit. The point of today is to do one lap of just my average cadence, and then we're going to speed up the cadence, and then we're going to slow down the cadence <laughs> each lap, and see what the data looks like across the board, really, all the nitty gritty stuff. See how much cadence actually affects your performance. So that was lap one. My what I just took it steady as a nice warm-up lap. My watch said it was around 177 to 180 sort of cadence. So my second lap, we're looking to speed that up. We'll be going for 190 if I can, 200. Let's just see. It's gonna look really weird. And then we'll slow it down. My legs are going so fast, but I'm not going any faster. Um, data says otherwise. Second lap speedier cadence. I got up to about 220, 224 and then when I struggled to keep it that far, it was really hard to do, it went to about 200 so I think we've got enough to work with. I feel boundier. I'm at 160 so this is good. Oh, I start. Third lap. Slower cadence. Boundy. Horrible. Really hard to do. That felt a lot harder. I thought you had to go slower but I went from like 150s to 165, so I don't know if that would work, let's see. This running thing's hard, you know. Now we're back home, we can decipher this data. Now I've put it in a really easy, digestible, simple little table, something you can do rather than all the graphs on the app, um, just to see physically what stands out to you. So in the teal colour, we've put the good stats, I've put fast, it's stuff that's going to make us faster. So I've got the good stat and you can see straight away that, that the fast cadence is giving us the most fast, most good data stat. Yeah. Um, and then you can see straight away that the, the slow cadence is giving us the most not so good data. It's going to slow us down. So having that slower cadence reaching more is actually affecting my stats. So let's dive into it a little bit more. It's good to do an average first just to get what you are doing so you know how to speed up and and then look at this because it's, it's it's really quite cool to do. So straight up, I put, um, let's talk about the average. So my power output, not great, 167 watts. But as soon as I add 20 steps per minute, I'm, and I'm boosting that right up to 200 watts, but it doesn't feel like it. And I have to stress that enough. It doesn't feel like it. There's that much of a difference with just speeding up. It just feels weird. Uh, the ground contact time, I've spent less time with my feet on the ground with the fast cadence 192 milliseconds compared to my average which is 245 which is a lot and then you compare that to the slow you know the the bounding I'm actually not that far off so I'm probably bounding and I'm absorbing perhaps too much on my run so 
on each stride. So I probably need to think about changing my stride, changing my foot stride. But this is this date is gold. This will help me out. Vertical oscillations. That's how much you're moving up and down in a run. Obviously, we don't want to expend energy doing that. We want to go forward. And you can see the fast cadence again. It's getting rid of a centimeter of going up and down. That means I can be a more economical runner by increasing my cadence. Not only that, we look at vertical ratio, and this is the percentage of how much of my stride is spent going up and down. And you can see from 8.8%, which is my average, to 8.9% and being slow, yeah, I really need to sort myself out. But the fast cadence gets slashed it right down to 6.6%. So I remember saying on the track that I'm not going any quicker. And I was going way quick. Well, like, yeah, I'm going three minute mile quicker. Three minutes per mile quicker. Just by adding 20 strides per minute. That's it. And that's on a track. So let's find out what happens on the trail. This is one of my favourite hills. This is a gnarly, gnarly hill. It doesn't look like much. They never look like much. But essentially, I thought, well, I'll take Cadence. Yes, we've done the track and we've seen what it's done on a smooth surface. And let's see what that does for trail runners. And realistically, trail runners, we're up and down these a lot. So I thought, well, let's try and see how Cadence affects your hill climbing capabilities. Yes, there is some loose gravel that we've got to contend with as well. And we're going to try and do this before the rain. OK, so let's just go. Problem. We ran into a problem. It's that this hill, it didn't, it didn't measure my cadence up the hill. Wonderful. So we're going to have to try a bigger hill. Yeah. Wonderful. Done a, I've got my baseline cadence of just sort of what I would do. And then now we're going to go exact same as the track. Quick cadence, slow cadence. Let's go. We'll go back now, decipher all that data, see if we can help some trail runners navigate the hills a little bit better, and then we'll head onto the roads and help some road runners. Beep beep. Come on, you must have thought of that too. We're back from the trails and we have some quite interesting results. I think you'll find. I've put it back in that really easy to read colour coordinated table. So straight off the bat, you can see the slow the fast cadence was 209 brilliant um it's really a lot easier to run smaller strides up a hill the slow was 92 i don't know how realistic this data is how reliable it is because at some parts of the trail it's it's the watch i was using and it didn't clock that i was moving which is rude but it didn't clock for some of it that i was actually moving it thought i was stood still so i've had to really dive into the data to find out at what point did i move and i'll show that in the graphs in a second that it's 209 don't believe it's 92 but we'll go we'll move with it power output by doing the faster strides up the hill i was actually getting out the least power the best was actually my average pace and just my average strides of getting up the hill so it's probably where you're more comfortable and you're just throwing your body up but actually fastening your cadence or slowing your cadence didn't help it was actually better just didn't actually run up it I spent way less time in contact with the ground, with the faster cadence. We know that now. It's, it goes for trails as well. Vertical oscillation. Again, I spent less time in the air. Perfect. Heart rate. A bit of another questionable one. <laughs> Again, you've got to put it down to the tech. Not everything's perfect. Apparently, I had 71 beats per minute running up a hill. I would love to believe that. That's the stats we've got, so we'll deal with it. And it's showing that the slow cadence was actually the worst for going uphill. Slowing your cadence is the worst thing you can do, statistic-wise. Vertical ratio it increased massively compared to the track. Um, we've got a 10.3% there, where it was 8.9%. So by forcing yourself up that hill, you're also forcing yourself higher. And it's just not good to go with a slower cadence. Much more efficient to get that faster cadence in. And then pace again, the fast cadence helps with my pace, um, which is the same as the track. So honestly, the average, just me just running in your natural cadence, your natural 
way of climbing a hill was actually okay. It was it wasn't that bad on the data. So you could think about applying this into your trails of going, right, well I can either shorten my cadence to get up this hill or I can just run up I can just get up it. But whatever you do, don't slow your cadence getting up a hill. Don't bound up a hill. It's not it's not gonna help you out. So these are my stats. This is what I found. Go and try it for yourself. But now let's go onto the road and see whether this reflects on pace. I'm obviously being an idiot. We're back from the road, but our trusty color coordinated graph with the data, as we have for the others. And the biggest takeaway here, you can see straight away that the road with a fast cadence is given the better stats. You can see it. The faster cadence gives me more power. Put a pin in that because we're going to discuss that in a minute. It's giving me less ground contact time, less time in the air. It's less percentage of my stride in the air. And it's making me quicker. I'm going to come back to the power because the power is important, I find. You'd think track and road would be relatively similar but the power output is the different one here and compare it to the track the power output with a faster cadence pretty much the same cadence 185 to 186 you get more power on a track 203 watts than i did on the road however out of all three speed cadences if you can call it that that was that gave me the highest output so it wasn't as much as the track that's got something to do with the track itself i'm assuming compare that completely with the trails is the absolute opposite so the power output with a faster cadence on the road great power output with a faster cadence on the trails it was the worst up a hill what you can see and you can see across the board here is that for trails track and the road a slower cadence gives you slower poorer statistics you're not as economical and you can clearly see that with the purple what i've taken away from this and hopefully maybe you have too is where you run and how you run is important when you're on a track it's better and more economical for you to have a faster cadence when you run on the road it is better for you and more economical for you to have a faster cadence on the trails do what comes natural yeah having a faster cadence will absolutely help you out of course the stats speak for themselves but overall a faster cadence not only will it reduce your risk of injury it actually feels like less of an effort subjectively and you're faster you're faster and you're more economical and you're going to stay injury free i'm sold <laughs>